everyone how are you doing today um unfortunately i am very busy but i have to make this video because uh, mr georgiani is uh, back at his larping again and now i am 100 percent against him you know before i thought maybe we can give him a chance but i don't trust him anymore with anything anymore really he's completely proven that he is anti-iranian basically from his works very much against the soul and heart of our people our genetic makeup itself actually now to begin i want to begin by saying that all of those uh, to all of those georgiani fanboys out there if you're still on the georgiani train now would be a good time to jump off because he is not in our favor whatever he says it's not in our favor even though i like many of his works and the fact that he's worked hard to raise awareness about the iranian history and tradition and culture and civilization but what he has also done is uh, given our achievements uh, legitimize the appropriation of our achievements by europeans and i don't like this and i know that many of you wouldn't like this either you know now firstly i would like to thank uh, my good friend the uh, aryan persian traditionalist who often uh, comments on my videos and uh, contributes to uh, lively discussion for alerting me to this fact that georgiani recently uh, published a very uh, misleading and uh, just uh, a uh, foolish article really in my opinion and all of you should uh, go check it out i am going to link it in the description and i am going to try to include it in my video this time last time i know that uh, the images of the article did not end up showing up so i will try to make sure that happens this time around thank you so the article is titled uh, race genocide and eugenics and before i begin i just want to talk about something at the very top of the picture you know he has a picture of Shah Ismail Safavi as you know the founder of the Safavid Empire and funnily enough he says that he was the Caucasian founder in an attempt to equate him with Europeans which was not the case because as you know Ismail did have some Anatolian Greek ancestry as well and uh, he but he was mainly Iranian you know he had some Turkic, uh, Turkic ancestry as well but he was mainly of Iranian descent obviously uh, uh, he was not, uh, uh, most certainly not European in any real sense uh, because of his Turkic uh, Iranian uh, as well as his Greek, uh, Anatolian Greek heritage. So not uh, European Greek, but Anatolian Greek. And uh, Mr. Dor Georgiani tries to portray him as this great uh, Caucasian European ruler, but he really wasn't. Most of his uh, imagery, aside from this one image in which he doesn't even look uh, European at all, he looks more uh, Caucasian, like from the Caucasus. But in this uh, one picture, you can see that he clearly is, uh, he doesn't look European. And Georgiani is using this to justify his view about uh, Shah Ismail. Sorry, I meant he is trying to use this imagery to showcase that ancient Iranians were uh, European-like. But this is not true. From his nose and facial features, Ishma, Ismail clearly does not look uh, like a uh, European. This is certain, you know. He looks more like a person from the Caucasus, modern-day Azeris, as well as uh, much a bit northern than that, near uh, Georgia and the Ossetians. He certainly does not look uh, like a European from Europe, so I don't know where uh, he is getting this from. Furthermore, Ismail was not a representative of the whole Iranian population, as he had Anatolian as well as Caucasian admixture from the Caucasus and minor Turkic admixture as well so he could not be considered wholly representative of the Iranian population but even then he clearly does not look like a European you can see this from his nose as, uh, you can clearly see this from his uh, the facial features of his nose his eyes as well as his overall facial features this is most certainly the case and I don't know where Mr. Georgiani is getting this misconception from that he was European Shai Smile so to begin, uh, he links a couple of articles from his personal uh, university institute uh, and uh, where he works. And uh, you can clearly see that the first one is just general. And, uh, you know, I don't really agree with it since, um, you know, I believe that racial differences do exist and they do contribute to the amount of uh, contribution someone does. But uh, I don't have the same view as Georgiani in this regard though and I don't really want to express my view at this time. However, I do agree with the second one. I think he should be terminated. He is not a legitimate uh, source on genetics, authority on genetics and he has no right to make the claims he does which are in this article. 
and uh, yeah so I will elaborate on that right now so he basically boasts about restoring the pre Arab and Mongol genetics of Iran whatever that means uh, to their original self so that it would be more in line with Europeans and he says this can be achieved within two generations and I am very upset you know this means he wants to sterilize mass amounts of Iranians and attempt to genetically engineer new ones with little or uh, no relation to their ancestors so I am against this and it's good that he has been uh, criticized on this point and uh, this is really bad and I agree with the uh, university's authority on this like how can he say that you know there is considerable evidence for a great deal of genetic continuity between the uh, pre-islamic and post-islamic periods in Iran which I elaborated on in my recent video so please watch that if you haven't already to get the gist of my argument okay to begin uh, there is no evidence well to begin Mr. Giorgiani just tries to defend himself and say you know it was wrong that I was uh, kicked out I was suspended and you know this is unfair and blah blah blah, blah. but obviously it's very fair he's talking like a fool here but to get to the gist of my main point and that is that he goes on to say that Arabs and Mongols genocided Iran for 800 years this is not true at all you know as much as I do not like the Arabs they barely genocided anyone in Iran that's the reality they didn't attempt to change the genetic makeup of Iran you know their more attempt was to shift the cultural uh, part of Iran but not really genetically he's very much lying about this point as I have proven and on top of that the Mongol genocide had a far less effect on actual Iran than on Central Asia where it was much more pronounced and this there's a lot of evidence for this as well so please uh, I will discuss this in a later video but here I'm just going to analyze his arguments okay his silly assertions are largely baseless especially considering that Iran's population at the time of the Arab invasions like the heart of Iran the Iranian uh, plateau was around uh, 8 to 11 million as high as 13 million and at the time the Arabian Peninsula the inhabitants numbered no more than a million and the amount of troops Arab troops who entered into Iran was around just uh, 40,000 and after that those who actually settled the peak settlement was no more than uh, 100, 150,000 and most of that was concentrated in Khorasan so how can 100, 150,000 people replace the population of 8 to 13 million it's impossible you know this was not the Neolithic era by this time his Iran was densely populated and it was very well uh, functioning you know it wasn't uh, empty and it wasn't uh, uh, agrarian Furthermore, during the uh, nativist uh, Iranian rebellions, there was uh, most of the Arab settlers were killed or expelled. And uh, after Iranians uh, gained control of their nation, uh, many uh, fled to out of Iran and back into the Arabian heartland. Some even went, you know, to Spain as far as Sicily, and some even settled further. Um, east in the uh, Indian domains of the uh, Arabian uh, remnants in India and Sindh but very few actually remained in Iran the only non-Iranic DNA in Iranians which has been found is actually uh, East Asian DNA ranging from 2 to 10 percent depending on the region and Indian or South Asian like DNA ranging from around um, 3 to uh, 10 percent as well again depending on the region but overall there's still around 85 to 95 percent continuity you know it's not like it's been irrevocably changed in fact it's been barely affected at all you know so Mr. Giorgiani the surgeons here are pretty much baseless and he has not actually looked at the actual scientific data we have today also, Giorgiani's claim that the original Iranians were similar to Germanics is also flawed because as we have clearly illustrated in my previous video, uh, they mixed with Neolithic Iranians and Calcolithic Iranians to form the Iron Age Iranian population which I had linked, which I had showed in the PCA. So Giorgiani again is very completely off point here. I do not know what he is talking about and I don't understand what he is on about, you know. Another uh, foolish claim made by Georgiani is that uh, after uh, Islam uh, the Iranians did not contribute to history or anything and that we didn't have any great philosophers or scholars or scientists but the reality is the evidence suggests that 
many of our greatest minds that rose after the uh, arrival of Islam. Obviously, it had nothing to do with the religion, but it had it showed that we still had the ability in us, you know. In the next few slides, I am actually going to link pictures of ancient Iranians as well as medieval Islam Iranian scholars during the Islamic period who made great advances, and you can look them up yourself. But I'm just going to list them. Uh, their names because I don't want to talk about them in this video but we'll cover that in later videos because I am really pressed for time but I thought that I had to make this video it was really urgent for me to get the message out you'll be clearly able to see that they look nothing like Germanic but like native Iranians and that the Muslim Iranian scholars or I mean the post Islamic uh, Iran is Islamic invasion scholars were very well advanced and very uh, they made many great achievements in science, technology, as well as in medicine and other disciplines, poetry as well, and I can link them, so don't worry. You can read them at your own time, for obvious reasons. I am busy at the moment, so I can't explain them in depth. We had our own uh, versions of Hegal or Nietzsche, as you will see, and you know, Georgiani is very stupid in this regard, simply stating that, you know, Nietzsche and uh, these people are the epitome of civilization and that ancient Greeks were also changed genetically and so were Italians. This is not true either as recent genetic tests prove that ancient and modern Greeks have a great deal of continuity and actually modern Greeks have a bit uh, more European ancestry, uh, Indo-European ancestry because of the Slavic invasions of Greece.
upset to have to make another video on Giorgiani because this man is completely, uh, I can't say anything. I'm just going to leave it at that. Giorgiani then goes on to make the foolish, uh, foolish assumption that uh, Iranians were from Europe and are European peoples and moved into Iran. But that's not true. As we know, the Iranic language is actually developed within the Iranian Plato. So he is completely off here. I don't even know where he got this from, but it's not factually correct. He also makes the assertion that Iranian civilization somehow stopped being brilliant, but this is not true because even up to the Safavid period, we were comparable to Europe. Our only decline began after the rise of the Afsharids, which were a Turkic group, and after them, the Qajars, who truly ruined Iran. And this man, he defends the Qajars, but the Qajars are the real reason for our ills. It doesn't have to do with any foreign invasion, it has to specifically do with the negligence and the degeneracy as well as the uh, foolishness of the Qajar rulers who led to us to our decline. They were very much uh, de decadent, decadent uh, rulers and for this reason we declined. Actually the Safavids were known for their architectural advancements as well as for their beautiful art and finally for producing great scholars such as Bahaiyad-Din al-Amili. Uh, who was originally Lebanese but uh, moved into Iran uh, with the Safavid rulers and he actually wrote many great treatises on religion and philosophy alongside the great uh, Mullah Sadra. Both of these were great scholars during that period and you should consider looking into them. Iran was even respected by many Western European powers during the Safavid era and considered an equal, we forged many alliances with them. So for him to make these assumptions is outrageous. He should be blaming his Qajar ancestors who were the real reasons for our decline, for what they did. They reaped and they looted and they murdered the people. You know, when they took Karman, they massacred everyone. And they were the reason for our downfall because they didn't do anything to advance the country and only cared about themselves. This so-called Qajar uh, descendant should not be respected by us and he should be excommunicated by the Iranian Renaissance, quite frankly. Finally, uh, one foolish assertion he makes is that the Scythians, the Scythians somehow allow the Iran to continue flourishing when they continuously raid it back into Iran. But this is not true. The Scythians in Central Asia were heavily mixed with East Asians already. They had around 25% East Asian slash Mongoloid admixture. So they didn't really, you know, how did that improve us if they were already mixed? And also when they came into Iran, they already had, uh, from Central Asia, they had a Neolithic Iranian ancestry. And then when they moved in, they likely mixed and were absorbed by the population. So I don't know what he's talking about. And also, the Scythians in Europe were very distinct because when they moved into Europe, they had mixed with the European peoples. And uh, for that reason, they were quite distinct from us. The Scythians in Ukraine, for instance, were very fair. And that was because of their regional uh, location. You know, they mixed with the native uh, Ukrainian population at the time. Furthermore, I will make the record straight here. There's no such thing as uh, an Aryan, a distinct Aryan European like people. You know, the Aryan identity formed by, was formed by the Eastern uh, Indo Europeans. And uh, it had nothing to do with the Europeans themselves. There is no evidence of Aryan ever being used as a title in. Uh, uh, Europe, you know, they say Ayer, from which Ireland is derived, but uh, many say that it's not derived from Aryan, you know, it is completely different in its derivation. So, once again, that identity is completely misused. It means honorable, noble. It does not mean blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, Nordic, you know, that's what he's basically saying. Also, the rest he goes on to talk about is just blibberish. So, I won't even try debunking it because it's obviously not true, but it's okay. But one thing I want to say is that he says that Iran was occupied from the 7th to 15th century. This is not true, you know. The Arab invaders left by the end of the 9th and early 10th century uh, led to the Iranian intermezzo native dynasty. Then the Seljuks came in. They ruled for a bit, you know. And then after that, the Turkoman dynasties did come in. But again, you know, they didn't really have much genetic influence. They mainly settled in the northwest of the country in Azerbaijan. And then after that... Uh, the Safavids arrived and, you know, uh, they re iranized and, you know, even though they spoke Azeri, they were not Azeri in origin and by this point any Turkic blood had been diluted and also uh, the Qajars were completely Turkic, but he doesn't even mentioning them, you know, they're the reasons for our decline, but I don't know why he doesn't mention them, you know, this is very foolish of him, you know, this is the reality.
he goes on to cite wealth of nations which said that Iran had an 84 IQ which is not true as evidenced by our great recent advancements you know 84 is same in the Balkh Park of uh, Pakistan and in uh, Saudi Arabia but compared to even African Americans less than them but the reality is we don't have an 84 IQ it's much higher probably around 98 99 because we have so many recent achievements as well as one many amazing uh, fields medals in the Olympiads even higher than Japan Korea both Koreas and even much of Europe you know you can go look this up yourself I will I will include links in the description so I don't know what he is talking about okay again wealth of nations is not accurate when it comes to Iranian IQ you can't just compare us to Pakistanis you know we have achieved much more than them in terms of culturally historically and even in modern times you know or even Saudis or African Americans you know this is wrong this is wrong information you know and he shouldn't be spreading this misinformation you know he then goes on to make some uh, baseless and uh, stupid uh, assumptions that uh, you know he I mean he goes on to backtrack and say you know okay maybe it may have been largely c cultural and you know maybe there wasn't a great effect of Iranian DNA on the Iranian genome but at the same time he says that there may be some uh, archaic human DNA which may have leaked into the Iranian genome affecting our intelligence or something like that and on top of that you know uh, yeah so I'll just say that for now he also mentioned something about the Mongols bringing a Confucian identity to Iranians, you know, a Confucian uh, uh, way of thinking. This is not at all true, you know. I don't know what he is on about here again. He is basing all of this on pseudo-history and pseudo-science. And I'm just going to stop here. But if you want, someone wants to debate me on this point, please message me. I'm more than willing to debate. He goes on to complain about the tyranny of the regime. And uh, I will just conclude by saying that uh, Mr. Georgiani, he is very, you know, he should not be associated with any Iranian nationalist, should de-associate themselves from him. And I call the Iranian renaissance to excommunicate him. You know, he is writing very controversial, very anti-Iranian information and without any scientific basis. And he is not backing up his claims, you know, so I want him excommunicated. And so do many of my friends. And, you know, this should be one of our goals. He is a complete charlatan. Goodbye everyone and this has been my longest uh, podcast but I hope it helped you uh, better understand this problem and I hope it debunked uh, Georgiani as well and goodbye I will uh, see you at another time. Take care. Bye.